Walker with Commercial Acoustics. Today we're going to be starting a new educational series on architectural acoustics. Uh, in the links below you can still see our full Lunch and Learn series that goes into detail on each of these topics, but we want to break it down into bite-sized segments. So one of the most common questions we get is how much acoustic absorption do you need? And how do you calculate it? It's not black magic, it's, it actually is basic science and we're, we're going to walk through it today. Um, so without further ado, let's get to it. Please like or subscribe or leave your comments below and we'll get right back to you. So the first thing we're going to look at is how much acoustic absorption you need in your space. This is calculated with something called the Sabin's formula. Okay, And what you have here is a, a coefficient 0 0.05 times the volume of the space, length, width, height, divided by the surface absorptive space. Okay. Uh, so you're, you're looking at a few different variables there, and all of this gives you your reverb time, your RT60 value. That's how long it takes for an impulse noise, like a clap, to go back down the ambient, um, ambient levels, okay? Your NRCs, noise reduction coefficient, that's how much sound each surface absorbs, okay? So a mirror or polished concrete, that's going to absorb 0% of the sound that hits it. It's going to reflect 100%. Whereas wood or drywall absorb just a little bit, about 10%. ACT and carpet might be 40%. And then acoustic panels, fiberglass panels, felt panels, those will absorb about 100% of the sound that hits them. And so let's see if we plug this in, how it affects our formula. So in our first example, we're gonna use just the most basic room. Uh, uh, 10 foot by 10 foot by 10 foot, okay? And that's a thousand cubic feet of space. And we're going to assume the drywall, or the ceiling is drywall, the walls are drywall, and the floor is marble or polished concrete, okay? So then in the denominator, you see the surface absorptive area is 400 for each of the walls, okay? So 100 each, and there's four of them, times 0.1 for drywall. For the ceiling, it's just 100 square feet times 0.1. And then for the floor, it's 100 square feet, but it's marble or polished concrete with no absorption. And so if you plug in the equation, you've got 0.05, once again, times 1,000 cubic feet, divided by 50 sabins is what, is what that's measured in. Um, and that calculates to one second, all right? So is that acceptable for your space? Well, it depends on what your space is going to be used for. For a typical conference room, that would still be too reverberant and too much echo in the space. Whereas in a restaurant, depending if you want it lively or intimate, uh, it might be just right. And for a multi-purpose space, that would definitely be acceptable. All right, so here, all we did was we changed the size of the room. We doubled the length, the width, and the height, but didn't change any finishes, okay? And you can see how greatly that affects the reverb time. At 20 by 20 by 20, that's 8,000 cubic feet in the top. And in the denominator, you do change the surface area as well, the NRC stay the same, so your overall reverb time actually increases to two seconds. And this makes sense. A lot of us know that in bigger spaces, the echo does take longer to actually die down, and that's when acoustic treatment becomes much more critical. All right then, so the last change we're making is to change the actual finishes in the space to carpet and ACT. These are more traditional uh, absorptive surfaces um, that can be used in most rooms. And you can see we stick with 20 by 20 by 20, 20 cubed in the numerator, but look how much the denominator changes. We have a 40% absorptive rating or a 0.4 NRC for the ACT. We have a 0.4 NRC for the carpet. And what happens is 8,000 divided by 480 times the coefficient drops to 0.81 seconds, okay? So while that's still maybe not acceptable for a conference room where you might still need some acoustic panels, um, some felt or fiberglass panels, it's still enough that it's going to be acceptable for most restaurant applications and the vast majority of other day-to-day -day applications as well. So that was just a brief look at the Sabin's calculation and how it uses the size of a space or the, or the volume and the absorptive coefficient of each finish to determine what the reverb time in the space is. To calculate it, you do need to know common NRCs, and you do need to know what your target reverb time is. 
it is a little bit oversimplified because it does assume a rectangular prism and it also doesn't look at specific frequencies, okay? So this is just looking at the overall broadband frequency, not speech frequencies, which can be particularly problematic. Um, here you can see standard acoustic fabric wrap panels and one inch or two inch panels. If you're just in a small team room or conference room, these are more than acceptable to stop that little bit of echo buildup. But generally speaking, for restaurants, clubhouses, or anything more significant, you do want a two inch thick panel that will treat those lower frequencies at 250 hertz or lower. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the first video in our educational series. Um, please do like or subscribe and leave your comments and we will be releasing another video here in the next couple weeks. Thanks.